Assalamualaikum and very good day. So we will continue our focus on unity negative feedback systems and define parameters that we can use as a steady state error performance as specifications just as we define the damping ratio, natural frequency, settling time percentage, overshoot and so on and so forth for the performance specification for the transient response. So this steady state error performance specification are called the static error constants. So let us how see how they are defined and how to calculate them. And uh, in the next slide, I will show you how to use them for the design. There are three types of uh, static error constants, uh, namely position constant KP, and we have velocity constant KV, and finally acceleration constant KA. So for the KP, it is defined as limit S approaching zero for the GS. For the KV is limit S approaching zero for the S, G, S, and finally for the KA is limit S approaching zero for the S square, G, S. As we have seen, these quantities depending upon the form of G, S and can assume values of zero, finite constant, or infinity. And since the static error constant appears in the denominator of the steady state errors, the value of the steady state errors it decreases as the static error constants increases. In the previous lecture, we evaluated the steady state error by using the final value theorem. But as an alternative method, we can make use of the static error constants to determine the steady state error. Now, let us do some examples for the uh, type 0, type 1, and type 2 system. We can find the value of Kp using the limit S approaching 0 Gs and as well as for Kv and Ka. And then once we find the value of Kp, Kv and Ka, we can input it in the steady state error equation which is for the step input is uh, 1 over 1 plus Kp. For the RAM input is uh, 1 over Kv and steady state error for the parabolic input is 1 over Ka. To conclude that for a step input, we can expect finite steady state error for a type 0 system, whereas for a type 1 and 2 and higher will yield zero steady state error. As for RAM input, type 0 system will always have infinity steady state error, where the output will constantly diverge out from the input. Type 1, on the other hand, will yield a finite value steady state error. And finally, type 2 and higher order of the system will yield zero steady state error. For the system with type 0 and 1 will have infinity steady state error if the input to the system is parabolic input. Type 2 will yield constant steady state error at R over Ka. That is, the curve of the output will follow the shape of the input curve at constant distance as time approaching infinity. And finally, steady state error for a system with type 3 or higher is zero. You can easily memorize the value of the static error constant and steady state error by referring to the table of system type and input. You can draw a triangular pattern for groups of zeros and group of infinities. Since most part, steady state errors are inversely proportional to the static error constant, you just need to memorize either one. Infinity static error constant means zero steady state error while zero static error constants means infinity steady state error and vice versa. Let's take a look at an example. A system with no integrations means the system is type 0. For a step input, Kp is 127, while Kv and Ka are 0. From the values of static error constant, we can find the steady state error by replacing the term with 1 over 1 plus Kp for a step input, 1 over kv for RAM input, and 1 over ka for a, for a parabolic input. Given a value for any static error constant, we can infer the specification of the system. For example, if the system has kv equals to 1000, we can conclude that the system is stable. The system is type 1, since only type 1 will, uh, will have a finite constant. The test signal or input to the system is a RAM input. And finally, the steady state error between the RAM input and the RAM output is 1 over KV. 
Similarly, for position constant Kp, if the value of Kp is 1000, we can say that the system is stable and the system is type 0. Refer to the table for type of system and the steady state error. We also know that the test signal is a step. And finally, the error per unit is given by equation 1 over 1 plus Kp. Next, we can also calculate the gain for a given steady state error. Say the error for a system is 10%. We know that it will yield some finite values. Thus, for a type 1 system, the test signal must be a ramp. We then can calculate the value of Kv and consequently use that value to calculate the gain K. Before we conclude this chapter, we will look at the system with non-unity feedback. For a step input, we can either use final value theorem or static error constant. Replacing the value of S approaching 0, we can calculate the steady state error. In a similar fashion, steady state error can be calculated for a RAM and parabolic input. We have learned about the steady state errors resulted strictly from the system configuration. On the basis of a system configuration and a group of selected test signals, step, ramps, and parabolas, we can analyze or design for the system's steady state error performance. The greater the number of pure integrations a system has in the forward path, the higher the degree of accuracy, assuming the system is stable. We also learn that increasing the system type decreases the steady state error as long as the system remains stable. Since the steady state error is, for the most part, inversely proportional to the static error constant, the larger the static error constant, the smaller the steady state error. Increasing system gain increases the static error constant. Thus, in general, increasing system gain decreases the steady state error as long as the system remains stable. That's all, folks. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Until then, thank you very much for your attention.